My name is Naomi Clement. I'm an Inseca student director at large uh, and an artist in residence currently in Sonoma, uh, California, Sonoma Ceramics. My co presenter today is Jill Foot Hutton. Yeah, I am Jill Foot Hutton, and I'm the coordinator of artist services and storytelling at Northern Clay Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'll see you all there next year. So, yeah. So yeah, without further ado, we're um, going to get started. So um, this presentation is basically designed um, to give you sort of a, a brief overview understanding of how to put together a successful proposal. We've geared it specifically towards NSICA programming strands and NSICA proposal types, but it, it's information that is really relevant to um, all sorts of different kinds of proposals. Um, from uh, you know, grant and scholarship applications, residency applications, open calls, um, public art opportunities, et cetera. All this information really does carry through. Um, and it's, you know, an, as a an creative person in the creative field, I try and make this a part of, a regular part of my practice. It's hard to do, it's hard enough to find time to get in the studio sometimes, but uh, applying for things is really important, whether it be, as I said, a, a grant, a show application, an article, a lecture, it's, it's a good thing to sort of make that part of your regular practice. So hopefully this presentation will help facilitate that. We've essentially organized this into kind of three main categories, research, plan, and edit. Um, so, you know, whether it's an INSECA proposal or um, presentation or any, any grant application, you really just need to get the information, make sure you know all the information before you start to put together your, your presentation. I can't tell you the uh, number of times that I've, you know, done a, started a, a proposal, um, like an application, and, you know, at like 11.50 at night, and it's due at, at 12 p.m., and then realize uh, five minutes before the deadline, oh, crap, I needed a letter of recommendation, and there's no time to get one. So really read through all the information um, beforehand, um, you know, for the NSICA program um, proposals, it's all on the website. Um, there's, you know, all sorts of information about the deadlines um, and uh, what is required of you for the application. The looking at last year's conference guide also has information about proposals and such. And the NSICA journal is a good place to start. And do keep in mind that all of this information it does translate to other proposals to our grant applications like. NCC has travel grants and residencies, as do many organizations. Um, and this just helps you get your thoughts in order. And then once you have it down, you can put it toward other places. Um, so in your conference program guide, you will see this page. And it includes all the dates and deadlines for 2019 in Minneapolis. And I don't know, for me, I always feel like, whoo, there it is. There's the deadline. Yeah. So. Make notes and um, yeah, get things together. Yeah, and sometimes what I do is, you know, I'll see a, a deadline like four months out, and I'll be like, I'll put a reminder in my calendar, uh, you know, for three weeks before the deadline or something like that. I'll put a reminder so I know, like, oh right, that's coming up. I gotta gotta get on that, um, so it doesn't totally fall off the radar. And so you keep track of all these different opportunities because there really are a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. out there. It's just sometimes you have to dig for it and make sure you keep on top of them. Um, so, as I mentioned, uh, there's an online application form for NSICA, um, and it sort of has a bunch of different categories. All of those boxes expand. Um, the, the application for next year's programming isn't up yet on our website. It should be very shortly. Um, so there's, you know, different topics for, propo uh, for proposal, eligibility, the format, application process, adjudication, and honoraria and responsibility, honorarium, honoraria. Um, that's a really important thing to check out first, actually, is the responsibilities. What are you responsible for if you get accepted to this specific um, opportunity? You need to make sure that you can meet those deadlines, that you can meet um, whatever financial obligations there may be. And SICA presenters do get a honoraria, a, an honorarium and a conference pass, but we don't pay for travel or lodging, so you need to be able to get yourself here. Um, and all sorts of opportunities will have different things that they require of you. Um, so you want to make sure you understand that fully and can commit to that before you undertake it. Um, and then another uh, 
important thing to decide is the format. That's a good sort of first decision to make. We have a lot of different types of formats. There's lectures or co-lectures like we're doing right now. Um, lectures and co-lectures, and those are generally in 30 or 60 minute increments for NSICA. Um, and then there's also a panel discussion, which is you know a discussion between three, generally three people and a moderator. Um, and those are really good for topics that are best served by multiple voices. Um, so yeah, you wanna kind of consider that beforehand. And panels are, again, I think you can select between 60 and 90 minutes. And then there's also process room. We, we accept proposals for the process room. Um, and I think, some, I think some of those are 60 minutes this year as opposed to 30 minutes. So if, you're, if you want to share a technique or a discovery you've made in the studio that's, that's process-based that you think other people would be interested in, that's a great venue to do that in. So most organizations that you're applying for are going to have a point person available to answer questions that you may have, but it's really important for you to do your due diligence on your own first because every right we all are doing a million jobs like wearing a million different hats and asking having people ask like the same question over and over again that you've gone to the trouble to put up on a website um, it can get frustrating so it's but it's also everybody really wants to help too so you know if you I would think the good rule to follow is if you run into a brick wall, don't give up. That's when you reach out to somebody and find it. But like, take a minute to look at first. And I know sometimes these pages can be, like on a website, can be really dense with information. And it's, I mean, how many of you by show of hands have ever pulled on a push door? Right? <laughs> yeah. So like, take a pause, read the page, and then if you still can't find it, then you can call somebody and, and let them know. They'll point you in the direction of who you need to talk to. And here within SICA, it's um, usually is uh, Mary yes, Clunin? Yes, Mary yeah. Clunin. Yeah. Or uh, Dory Nielsen can also help you with things as well. Mary Clunin's the program director. Uh, you'll see her around, lady with the lovely curly red hair. Yes. Um, lots of energy. Uh, or uh, Dory can help as well. But also, you know, if it's a student-related concern, you, c you know, student programming, you could reach out to the, one of the student directors at large. All the, the board information is on the website, so we are, we are there to help. Yeah. And then know your deadlines. You know, they, they really do come up quickly in all scenarios. So um, looking really far ahead, the concurrent exhibition deadline for NSICA is generally sometime in February, the year before the conference. So for the 2020 conference. In Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, February 6th. Oh my goodness, this is unnerving. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> the, but the program proposals for Claytopia, those are due May 16th, 2018. Student interest, short form topical networking, you see up there October 10th, 2018. And the concurrent exhibition deadline that is already passed because it's March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, and, and it, it seems really far ahead of time, but you know, we have to book People have to book exhibition venues. It gets juried by, you know, a large group of people. So, these are, you know, if you want to put together a show, we'd love that. You know, put this date, you know, information in your calendar for Richmond, Virginia. Mm -hmm. um, and again, all that inf those deadlines are on um, that page in your conference program guides. You can check that out there. Um, the next section is sort of essentially about planning. A good first place to start um, is brainstorming. You know that sort of blue sky scenario. What um, what what do I you know what do I have to offer is a is a good place to start. Um, and also what pro what programming do I think is missing from the conference? You know what programming did I enjoy? Um, all pretty much 99% of the programming that you see here at Ensica is member generated. Um, we curate a small portion of it, but the rest of it is, is put forward by our membership, by you, uh, and we want you to do that. Uh, we can't exist without you. So you are all wonderful, creative individuals with exciting things going on in your life, and you know, think about you know, who would be served by the information that you have, have to deliver. Um, what you know, program strands could your information fit into? And I'll, we'll talk a bit more about programs and strands later. But um, you know, a good place to start for brainstorming is looking at the last year or current year program guide and sort of see, 
you know, what's been offered. We're unlikely to offer, you know, a same, a similar type of presentation year after year. We want new and, and fresh discussions. Um, it could be about a similar topic, but discuss it in a, in a new way. Um, a lot of times these convert brainstorming um, happens well at, at the bar after, you know, after a lecture or over lunch or coffee or something where you're like, yeah, that was interesting, but I, you know, I, they really should have talked about this. Then pr propose it. That would be great. We'd love that. That's you know how these things how these things happen. So, um, you know, and Sika conference is a great place for that brainstorming to happen. And then you know once you've brainstormed your incredible, fantastic idea that everyone's going to attend and there's going to be standing room only at your presentation, you want to make sure you have all the information you need to do the application. So a good sort of rule of thumb is just you know go to the website see the application form and copy and paste it into mm -hmm. a Word document. So that again, you know you've got all the stuff, you know, click on all the links, make sure you understand what you need so you're not there like, I have been at, you know, 10 minutes before the deadline realizing, crap, I needed this other thing that I just don't have time to do. So make sure you gather all that information so that there aren't any surprises. Um, and then, you know, just start and write a draft. And it's basically what you learned in English, you know, writing 101. Um, you know, introduction, body, conclusion. Um, and you, you want to make sure uh, that you're hitting the key points you want to address. Often I'll sort of start with the list and sort of do like general free form writing and then, and then start to condense it down. Um, and you want to make sure your language is you know, clear and concise as well. And I think it's a good place to point out that really once you, I mean, at Northern Clay Center we do this all, because we write lots of grants for operating budgets as do many organizations, nonprofit organizations, right? And you get your boilerplate information down and then it's transferable to right. all other kinds of things. So you do the legwork um, once and, and it, you can get a lot of mileage out of it and just that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, you yeah. could use that to, to apply, you know, maybe you want to write an article that, that goes hand in hand with your presentation or, um, you know, apply to ma magazine or, you know, a blog, something like that. Use this information. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, so the main ele elements of NSICA proposals. So the, uh, in the form, there's the, the title, which that's the hook. That's going to be in the program guide. That's going to be in the app. That's going to be the first thing that people read um, to get them to read your program guide abstract, the, the shorter description. So there's the title, the program description, which is a longer, sort of more in-depth description of what it is that you want to do. And that's what the board is going to be reading in depth when we, we, when we jury all of these. And then, as I mentioned, there's the program guide abstract, which is the shorter condensed version. That's basically your elevator pitch for your presentation. And that's what will go in the app. That's what would go in the, the um, program guide. So that really needs to like condense your information in a like, clear and concise way and, a, and in a way that's going to engage with people. Um, and it's you know, important, like we were talking earlier about, you know, sometimes you'll go to a presentation and it isn't quite what you thought it would be given the program guide description. But it was like more hook and less accuracy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you want it to be accurate and authentic, give people a real understanding of what, what it is that you're going to do, be genuine. Yeah, and keep in mind, like, right, we all, there's a finite amount of time in these two days of talks, right? So people, be respect, think about it being respectful of mm -hmm. your colleagues' time, right? That they want to go to a lecture in this hall and that hall, and so you nail it for them so they can figure out what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, just the last thing, too, with, with these elements is the images. We are a visual field. Um, so, it, you know, images are a really important part of a, of a proposal. Um, one, it tells us when we're jurying them that you actually know what you're talking about and you can, you've done the research, you can pull this information together. Um, and but professional quality images or good quality images are really important for, for anything. Um, so, you know, it, again, it tells us that you've, you know what you're talking about, you're professional, put together, um, and can deliver content that will be engaging to the audience, too. You know, if the images are blurry and, like, out of focus, you know, no one wants to see that up here. They're going to mm -hmm. go to the next presentation. So, 
Um, and then we sort of mentioned the program strands earlier. Uh, again, this information is on the website, all these different program strands, career paths, clay discourse, histories and context, learning modalities, maker spaces, materials and technology, and social and sustainable impacts. They're on the website and they sort of like break out into like more full descriptions about what NSICA means by those. And this is a great place to start for uh, brainstorming too. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, it can be a good thing to, to get ideas going. One thing I, I would say about this is don't um, don't get too hung up on on what category it fits into. Oftentimes, a presentation will fit into like three different categories, and you'll see that in the app. It'll be tagged with a bunch of different things. So, you know, don't get too hung up about that part. It's it's just sort of an umbrella to to fit your presentation in. But it is something something to consider and think about. And then, you know, lastly. Uh, you know, editing is so important. As uh, Patricia Fuller said, writing without revising is the literary equivalent to waltzing gaily out of the house in your underwear. Which can be fun. Yeah, I may love yeah. my penguin underwear, but yeah. I don't necessarily want, want everyone to see them. In front of 100 people, yeah. 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 So um, the proposals, right, when you're starting something, no idea should be shot down. So it might start out long and in unstructured piece of free writing, um, but it's important that it doesn't stay that way. Get the ideas out, but then also structure them. And really, really important to have someone else proofread your proposal, and that they're not only reading for grammatical errors, but that for readability, clarity. Um, your proofreader should, on the one hand, your proofreader, you should have a proofreader who understands what it is that you're talking about, right? Um, but then it's also important to have a reader that doesn't know what you're talking about, that you want to like bring into the conversation because they can spot holes where like you might just gloss over something because you understand it. Mm -hmm. And someone who, who doesn't will be like, wait, what about this? And they can help you figure out where you need to fill in the gaps. Or they can also help you like round it out, you know, make it a more fully holistic presentation. So yeah, yeah it's good to have, you know, a team of some of my friends do. They have like five proofreaders on like speed dial that they can, will you read this? Well, yeah. and it's, it's good to have someone, as, as Jill said, who isn't at all familiar with your topic or even with ceramics potentially read it because they'll be able to help you with, you know, some, we can tend to, towards like very specific jargon sometimes mm -hmm. that other people may have no idea what we're talking about. And that's really important, especially for like a grant that's gonna be reviewed, you know, by a jury of artists in other disciplines, you know, who will have no idea what reduction of cooling is or, you know, other things that, so it, that's a, an important part of the process. I think, I think, I'm just thinking about this, like I think it's a good, like you've gotta find that balance, right? Because sometimes, mm -hmm. like if you, want to talk to wood fire potters, right. right? Then like it doesn't matter that like the low fire electric people don't know yeah. what you're saying, right? So you gotta find that balance, but it, yeah. Yes, totally. Yeah, yeah it, and it's sort of pitching to your audience too, you know, figuring that out. So we'll just um, wrap up with some <coughs> other concerns. So we want you to think about addressing the theme, but much like the, you know, the strands, they're never meant to hem you in. They're meant to be leaping off points, you know? So Claytopia is the organizing theme of 2019 conference in Minneapolis. Um, I'll just, you can read this up here, but since the 1960s, the Twin Cities region has played a pivotal role in shaping the renaissance of studio pottery and craft <laughs> as cultural forces. Claytopia will engage regional, national, international audiences, artists, thinkers, curators, educators, right? It's like, this is a big umbrella. There are a lot of ideas and we're like, yeah, we are all creative people. So we're like, it's our job on the daily to make connections. So it doesn't have to be like, it, it's not meant to be a shackle. It's meant to be a diving board, okay? A springboard for you. And, and so that we can all gather together and have a conversation. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to figure out how to tie it to it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a great way to put it as a, as a springboard. Um, and so I'm going to chat a bit about adjudication, um, how, how the NSICA proposals specifically get juried. Um, so they are read and reviewed by NSICA's board of directors. They're made up of artists, um, curators, educators, um, students, all sorts of people in the field of, of ceramics. Um, and all of the proposals are read generally within one week's time by all 
board mem member, every single board member, I think there's like 15 of us, 15, 16 of us, reads them all. Um, it was really fascinating and um, exciting to see all that information, but it's like 150 proposals that we're reading within a very short span of time. Generally, a little wine is involved. <laughs> um, and, but again, so that's where it's really important to make sure that things like that program guide abstract really hook us in and really convey what it is that, that you want to convey about your presentation because when reading 150 proposals, you're, you're going to read the title and the program guide abstract first and then you're probably going to read the bio mm -hmm. uh, and then if that information grabs you, you're going to do more than just skim the program, the further description. If, if you're kind of totally confused and lost at the program guide abstract, sometimes you just end up skimming the longer description because it it's not compelled you to read further and find more information. Um, so it's, again, really Im important um, that you spend time editing those uh, and make sure they're conveying what you want them to. Um, also, in terms of what we're looking for, we are not looking for presentations that are, you know, I make this great work and I want to tell you all about it and show you photos of my work. That is not what we are looking for in these, these types of discussions. There is the short form, uh, the Blink 2020 room, which is a, a great, um, uh, That's the place for place that. Place for that. Yeah, and I'll we'll chat a bit more about that later. But um, we want you know content that is going to address you know critical issues in our field, um, help further the conversation, bring new voices, new new ideas to the table. Um, and uh, what else was I going to say? Oh yes, the resume and bio are required when you're applying. Not everyone always includes those. I really strongly recommend that you do. Uh, I know for me, that's something I always read the person's bio um, to see, like, can this person have they ever given a lecture before? You know, can they are they an authority on this topic that they're, you know, purporting to be an authority on? Um, can they handle being in front of a room of you know 100, 150 people? Um, so those are important pieces of information that just help sort of round out the picture of who you are because we want to make sure um, that you'll be able to deliver on what it is that you're saying. Um, and yeah, there are more sort of general guidelines about the adjudication process that are, that are in, um, in the program or in the prospectus online. And then, so we read them all and then we get together and we have a meeting for like three days where we debate uh, all these these proposals and how much programming time we have and it's just a matter of there's only so much time so many rooms um, and you know trying to weigh did we have a program a, a proposal like this last year a presentation like this last year um, is this offering something new so it's it's really fascinating discussion sometimes it gets very heated um, in wonderful ways um, <laughs> But your, your, pose, your proposals are read by everyone and considered very thoughtfully. So um, please do put them forward. And to that note, I just want to say, in this, as getting this applying for shows, uh, proposals, you know, all of these things, if you ever have the chance, like when, when the opportunity comes up to sit on a jury, if you have never done that, do, even if you like jury an elementary school art show and like work your way up to like jury, it's really a good place to be because then you get to see that it's not like these are not like personal yeah. axes that any juror is ever grinding. They're really trying to create like the best program that they can. And the best way to understand it is to be a juror yourself. And then you'll see like how that works. So mm -hmm. yeah, I would encourage you to work that angle yeah, of it too. Great point. Um, so this sort of just sums up what, what I essentially just said, you know, a successful proposal is going to be well thought out uh, and thought provoking and articulate. Um, you know, share knowledge in new and exciting ways uh, and, you know, address uh, holes in our field that we, that we need to address, you know, things um, that are important to, you know, have um, discussions about at the conference. Um, a couple other ways to present at NSICA, as I mentioned, um, you know, we've got the short form programming, which is the Blink 2020. I think that was in this room actually earlier today, and that's like 20 slides, 20 seconds a slide, like is Pecha it? Kucha. Yeah, yeah, Pecha Kucha style talk. So that's more where it's like, oh, I went, you know, I went to Italy and did this incredible ceramic thing, and I want to tell everyone about it. That's like a really great place to do that. Or like, I have this awesome um, thing I want to uh, share with you all in this, you know, smaller, smaller way. That's a great spot for that. Student interest programming is um, programming that 
you know, is of interest to students. Sometimes it is delivered by students. Sometimes it's, um, and that's in this room as well, um, you know, on just different opportunities for students. But often it's uh, programming that is not given by students, by recent graduates. We've got some interesting panels happening this year by recent graduates about things that will concern students. Um, and then there's uh, the topical networking sessions, which those are on Wednesday. So they happen yesterday. And those are sort of like a facilitated conversation. There's no slide presentation involved. It's just you propose a topic that you know you want to have a conversation about mm -hmm. with other people who are interested in that. There was one about um, pots and food <coughs> and uh, wood firing communities and, you know, um, all sorts of other different types of, of conversations. And those are a great way, those kinds of um, discussions are a great way to get your foot sort mm -hmm. of wet at NSICA and try out a presentation. It's, it's lower risk. You know, you're not up here uh, in front of a, a whole group of, of people. Um, it's more of a, a conversation with like-minded individuals in yeah. a, a casual And if you way. think about like over the course of the year, you know, you're following people on social media that you're interested in or, they're talking about things that you're talking about. It's a great way to meet them in real life. And then you were saying like they have the rest of the conference yeah. to carry on that conversation. And then that can grow into a panel or a mm -hmm. presentation, right? That kind of thing. Yeah, often those topical networking, you know, it'll start one year as a topical networking discussion and then they'll end up, you know, proposing a, you know, a, a presentation for the next years. So that's a great thing. And we will look at that, you know, okay, well this person's given a topical discussion you know, before, so they, they kind of get what it's about. They understand, you know, how to, how to do it. Um, and then, you know, lastly, just things that, to think about when you're putting these together, you know, why should anyone care about what it is? I'm sure they do, but, you know, you need to tell us why, why we should care uh, and, and think about that, you know. Uh, make your proposal dynamic, um, articulate, interesting. Um, think about your audience, like who are, who is your audience for this? That's a really, you know, I think about that with my work, like who is my audience um, and am I serving them by this proposal or not? Mm -hmm. uh, and that can also help you with brainstorming too. Uh, and then, you know, make sure your proposal can be understood by anyone, as we've said. Um, yeah. And then lastly, in conclusion, um, make applying to these kinds of things just a regular part of your practice. I'm a Canadian, so I had to include a hockey quote. Um, but it is really true, and it's something I keep in mind. You know, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And uh, I've, there have been shows that I've applied to that I was like, no way in hell am I getting into this, and I did. And then shows that I've applied to them, like, yeah, I got this in the bag. And it's like, no, no, I didn't. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you just really need to, to put it out there. I was, I was um, telling Naomi that I've been advising people to, like, make other people tell you no. You don't tell yourself no, right? So like, just throw it out there, see if it sticks, right? Yeah, yeah. Because no is not going to kill you, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's really great advice. So um, we're here for questions. I know people have to dash off for other things. We got it. Oh, and there's a microphone over there if you want questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah. anyone? Uh, the question was if we shared um, successful proposals. I, I mean, those are the ones that are in the program guide. Uh, that's, yeah. And uh, one thing, sorry, as people are leaving that I wanted to mention, I last year's talk is up on the web, the blog, I believe, the YouTube channel. And I'm also going to upload the, a PDF of this presentation to the app, and we'll get it on the blog at some point, too. So if you, you want to circle back to it. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Any other? There's a there's a microphone there was, right yeah. there. Yeah, if anyone. If you, if you submit an idea. Um, I could almost hear you. Just go ahead and yeah. scream okay. it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, if, um, if you propose an idea and it doesn't get accepted, can you rework the idea and resubmit it? Is the question. Yeah, that's a great question. Often that'll happen, um, you know, and you'd obviously want to get feedback. Um, 
about why this proposal wasn't successful maybe uh, and, and, and then rework it. Yeah, you can, you can totally submit it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Enseca, I know we are willing to give feedback. Yeah, and then I was just going to repeat her question. Yeah. She was oh, just asking, "How do you get feedback on your application?" Yeah, and then you know, often it, it depends on the organization. But you can—I mean, people are busy. But you can reach out and say, you know, just be polite and say, you know, I'd really I'd like to apply again. I, you know, would love some feedback. I know with the student interest um, stuff with students who are wanting to propose, we'll often have students reach out to us about their idea, and we're happy to work with them um, to, to help make their, their presentation or proposal better. So, yeah, totally. Yes, ma'am. So the question is if you can submit proposals under, are you talking about the same proposal but submitted under different it's topics or? Proposal, so submitting more than one proposal. We're very unlikely to accept more than one proposal by, by the same person. Sometimes it'll happen that a person may be on one or two different panel discussions or do a, a presentation and a topical networking session or something like that, but we're very unlikely to, to take two different presentations by the same presenter. Well, I would put forth the proposal that you feel the most convicted about. And then, you know, again, if you're not sure about what program strand it fits under, don't fuss about that too much. Just put the one you think best. And we'll, that often gets <coughs> tweaked later. So, yeah. Yeah, I think there was another. I feel like it's happened both ways. Yeah, it happens both ways. Sometimes, generally, the person who's proposing the panel says, you know, has the people that they want to be part of their panel. Sometimes we will get, mul you know, a couple different proposals or panels that are, are very similar and that we feel like, you know, these people should talk to each other because I think they have something to, like, if they combine it, it will be even better. So occasionally that happens, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, we have, uh, you know, art historians, critics, it's, it's not, yeah, Anthropologists yeah, and I believe someone's giving a presentation about uh, a collaboration they did with Chef Dan Barber, I don't think, sadly, I don't think Chef Dan Barber's here, but, um, it's, you know, yeah, there are all sorts of different collaborations are great. We totally encourage that. Yeah. Naomi, I'm, I just wanted to, is it, is it right that, can you do it two years in a row or they do every other year? Uh, we, we often, we try not to have the same people presenting all the time just to keep things fresh, but sometimes. If it's really good. Yeah, if it's like pretty awesome, we, we can't say no to that. So, so we will do that. But we often, you know, or, you know, want someone will do a, topical networking one year and then maybe they'll do process room the next year or or a lecture or something you know or blank so yeah we try and keep it fresh I, I wondered if you had any um, advice about what makes a successful proposal for the current exhibition because it's a little bit different not on the program hmm. that's the that yeah you know I haven't did you sit in on the jury for that no but I do know I do know that they want I mean I feel I feel like I've heard a little I'm trying to think of, but I know the thing that like it gets turned, I was like when, hey, me and my best buddies are like all of my alumni friends from 
right, West Virginia want to like have a show to, it's like, who doesn't, right? Yeah, right? So they want like, they want to see like something thoughtful with like a strong concept. Um, and the, you know, some like in that Claytopia umbrella for the next year, it would have been, I mean, just, it's a really broad one, but still if you can have, there are lots of in-depth layer, multi-layered ideas. But when people come and it's just like me and my five great friends, then that's not what they're looking for. Yeah, and, and that's something too where you, know, you could reach out to the exhibitions director. Um, Lee Mickelson is the current one, but she's actually stepping off and Brett Benford is gonna be stepping back on um, as that position. And so you could reach out to him and you know, again, these happen like way in advance. And and you know communicate with them about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the theme for twenty twenty. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they no. do yet, do they? No, that won't be. When does that get announced? I feel like that gets discussed. Will get discussed in the fall. I think that's right. I think that's yeah. what in many Minneapolis. I think we um, had brainstorming sessions. No, I it think came it up with several in like the in the summer. summer time. In the summer, meaning yeah. it will get discussed and pitched and then solidified for when the call yeah. goes open in the fall. So probably next fall, I would guess, and then because then the proposals will be due next February. So. Another question. Yeah. So my friends and family gets pretty tired of like editing all my. Uh huh. <laughs> Huh. The question was whether um, paid editor. I I haven't. I'm luckily my friends and family aren't sick of me yet. But um, uh, yeah, that, I'm sure there are ones out there. I think it would just be important to make sure it's someone who you know, on like if you want someone to edit for more than just grammar, you know, you want them to edit for style and voice too. And and um, that's a that's a more nuanced thing. You know, so, but I think you could. Don't be surprised in this community of ours like if there's someone that you don't know but that you admire their work or you admire a lecture like start communicating with them you know what I mean it's not like they're inaccessible any of us right so from the top of the heap to the well, least of us I mean sure I mean I proofread as part of my job so but I think like grace and good manners go a long way and if you start like and ask someone I would really love your input, then yeah, absolutely. Well, or maybe that would be a great topical networking mm -hmm. group, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, um, in my community, the Arts Council, um, they administer the, the and Oh. Nice. That's a that's a great point. Yeah, there are lots of local arts organizations that may be willing that may offer some of those services either on a you know free or minimal cost basis. Thank you. Yeah. This gentleman. Oh. oh boy. That's a good question. That's a great I don't question. I don't know. It it changes. You know, like every year it's different. It's interesting. It, it seem things seem to go in waves. I mean, I'm guessing we're going to get a lot of proposals for next year about um the Me Too movement um <laughs> would be a guess. Uh so um yeah, I think it 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 kind of goes in in waves. Yeah. Um yeah. Yeah. Yes, that is it. That's. Yes, yes. I'm yes. gonna. I'll post it on on social media shortly. But yeah, the the Welcome NSJE Canadian. Canadian and Mexican students. So, yeah. <coughs> Any other questions? Well, thank you, everyone. Oh, one more. Yeah. For uh, sorry, do we? I think the question is, do we uh, favor or like a col collaborative? You know, I think collaborations are always, in, and I think panels are, or discussions, presentations are always made richer for having you know multiple perspectives and 
Uh, I think that's something that the field is increasingly interested in. So it, it's more just like the the track record of the individuals and do they serve the actual topic or is it is it just there sort of more gratuitously to try and make it look better? It would be like, does it actually serve the content? For me, personally. But, I like that. Yeah. I never thought about working that angle. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming out. Yeah, and I hope to see your proposals. <laughs> <laughs>